Officers with the Barnstable Police Department responded to an emergency call on February 27th of 2011 about a possible shooting at a residence located in the 10 block of Fresh Holes Road in Hyannis. Hyannis is located on Massachusetts Cape Cod Peninsula. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders located the body of 31-year-old Todd Lampley in a bedroom. He suffered what appeared to be several gunshot wounds. A handgun, believed to be used to commit the crime, was later found to have been tossed in a nearby pond. Unfortunately, finding the weapon did not lead investigators to the suspect and the case went cold for some time. Investigators did, however, find that the crime had lots of references to a show called The Wire. They found a phone at the crime scene, which was attached to the name Marlo Stanfield. Marlo Stanfield is the name of a fictional character in the show, and who headed up the most ruthless and feared drug ring in Baltimore. Todd was inside of his home at night when he was shot by someone standing outside of his bedroom window. Another link to The Wire. In season one of the show, a fictitious woman who is cooperating with police is shot when the shooter stands outside of her window at night, taps the glass to get her attention, waits for her to approach the window, then fires a fatal shot into the home. Authorities also reported that they recovered a sweet potato from the scene of the fatal shooting. In season four of The Wire, one of the fictional police investigators solves a case in which the shooter used a potato as a makeshift silencer when fatally shooting his victim. Recently, with advances in DNA technology, the sweet potato was sent for DNA analysis. It was then discovered that Devaris Hampton's DNA was on the sweet potato. In addition to the DNA evidence, Hampton was wearing a court-ordered GPS device that tracked his whereabouts at the time of Todd's slaying. The location data from that device placed Hampton at the Fresh Holes Road residence at the approximate time the crime was committed and later at the pond where the gun was recovered. Hampton and Todd also had a previous connection with Hampton testifying in court that Todd was involved in the July 2007 slaying of Jacka Sellers in the same neighborhood. Sellers was also shot inside his home by someone shooting through a window from outside. This all led to 40-year-old Devaris Hampton being arrested on February 24th of 2023 and charged with taking the life of Todd Lampley. Hampton appeared in Barnstable District Court, where he entered a plea of not guilty. He is scheduled to appear in court again on April 5th of 2023. In August of 1980, two field workers in Solano County, California, found the body of a woman in a field in unincorporated Dixon, around 20 miles southwest of Sacramento. The unknown woman suffered multiple gunshot wounds to the head and neck. For more than 10 years, she remained unidentified, listed in county records as only Jane Doe. In 1992, the victim was identified, thanks to the National Missing Persons Unit, as 21-year-old Holly Ann Campiglia from New Jersey. Holly Ann began running away from home when she was an 18-year-old freshman at Glassboro State College in New Jersey. Holly Ann's mother claimed that issues had began the year before while she was a senior in high school. That's when she began taking drugs and having emotional problems. We don't know if one triggered another, said Mrs. Campiglia. When Holly Ann ran away the first time, she was found a month later walking on Route 70, about a mile away from the family home on Forest Hill Road off Springdale Road. She would go on to run away four more times. Each time she came back, she was less responsive to the medical treatment that she took for emotional problems, said Mrs. Campiglia. Her mother says the last time she saw her daughter was when she jumped from the car while going to a counseling center on June 10th of 1980. She said she wanted to get on with her life. I want to see the world and do things my way. I tried to pull her back, but the car was on Route 70 near the Sheraton Post and I couldn't hold on to her. Her mother informed the Cherry Hill Police Department. We didn't hear from her for a month until we got a letter. 
It said she was living with two guys. We should try not to think of her anymore. We tried to trace the letter, but the return address wasn't a real street. The letter was mailed from Sacramento in July of 1980. All further leads went cold. Even though the sheriff's office identified her in 1992, they had no idea who was responsible for taking Holly Ann's life. In 2021, Holly Ann's family asked the Solano County Sheriff's Office to review the case and resubmit any original evidence for DNA analysis. That's exactly what investigators did. A few months later, their office received a report from the Serological Research Institute stating that male DNA was found on pieces of evidence that was collected back in 1980. Officials submitted that DNA to another database with the San Mateo Crime Lab in California and discovered that it belonged to someone already doing time for a serious crime. That man is Herman Lee Hobbs, who looks like something you'd find in a pyramid. Investigators found that 76-year-old Hobbs was serving a significant prison sentence for taking someone's life in 1975 for which he was convicted in 2005 in Sacramento. He assaulted and fatally stabbed 13-year-old Terry Peta in 1975. Terry vanished on the way home from her school in Rio Linda, which is a Sacramento suburb. Her body was found several days later stuffed in a drain pipe. Hobbs also had been charged with taking the life of 29-year-old Brenda Ann Tucker, who went missing in 1994 from her home in Oroville. Loggers found her skull with a bullet hole in it in 2001 in Yuba County and DNA identified her. Hobbs, who knew her family, was charged with her slaying in 2001, but a judge dismissed the case the next year for lack of evidence. In February of 2023, an arrest warrant was issued by a Solano County Superior Court judge along with a removal order to have Hobbs transferred from state prison to Solano County Jail to face the new charges for what he did to Holly Ann. Officials think Hobbs may have committed other crimes and had this to say in their Facebook announcement. Detectives continue to work in collaboration with other Northern California agencies to potentially identify and or solve additional cases that may be linked to Hobbs. We are grateful to the Camp Piglia family for their patience and assistance, and to the labs whose new technology allowed additional testing of older evidence and to the staff who worked tirelessly to help bring closure to a lifetime of waiting, the sheriff's office said. Anyone with information about the homicide is asked to contact the Solano Sheriff Investigations at 707-784-7050. The Sheriff's Office also wanted to give a special mention to the original deputy who investigated Holly Ann's case, Jose or Joe Cisneros. His life was taken in the line of duty in 1985. His hard work is still helping solve cases over 40 years later. In October of 2004, 28-year-old Keisha Brown's body was found in a bathtub inside her apartment in the 700 block of East Flamingo Road. An autopsy revealed that Keisha had been strangled, stabbed, and assaulted by an unknown attacker. Witnesses interviewed at the time provided a description of a possible suspect seen entering and leaving the apartment, but that person was never identified. Forensic evidence was collected at the crime scene, but was unable to help in identifying the suspect at the time. In July of 2022, Detective Dan Long reviewed Keisha's case. He requested for additional DNA testing of evidence located on Keisha's body during her autopsy. While working the case, Dan Long realized that there are a lot of similarities with crimes that took place in 2005. All of those crimes involved Norman Flowers. Flowers in 2011 had entered an Alfred plea for charges against him that he took the lives of 45-year-old Mary Lee Coote and 24-year-old Reina Gonzalez. 
An Alford plea means Flowers didn't admit guilt but acknowledged prosecutors could prove their case against him. In exchange, prosecutors agreed to stipulate the two consecutive life prison terms without the possibility of parole instead of executing him. Mary Lee's body was found inside her Russell Road apartment on May 3rd of 2005. She had been assaulted and strangled. Flowers' DNA was discovered on her body. Eight hours later, Rena's body was found in the same complex. She had been strangled with a telephone cord. In October of 2008, Flowers was convicted and given a life sentence because he took the life of 18-year-old Sheila Quarles also in 2005. Flowers, had previously spent time in prison, had been paroled twice, and was out of prison for about 20 days when he took Sheila's life. With the crimes being so similar, Detective Dan Long was convinced that Norman Flowers was responsible for taking the life of Keisha Brown. It was only in February of 2023, however, when DNA linked Flowers to Keisha's crime scene, and that it could be confirmed that he is responsible. Metropolitan Police Department Lieutenant Jason Johansson made the announcement to the public. As Johansson spoke during the press conference, members of Keisha's family stood behind him, wiping tears from their eyes. Keisha's daughter, Kalia Brown, briefly spoke through tears. I just want to say thank you to the police department, she said. Flowers remains at High Desert State Prison, where he is serving three life sentences.